It's another day and we're on the mountain working. Today, we're gonna take our fireplace inside from this to this and one day using Evolve Stone. And Dom's here with Evolve Stone. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you may remember him from the Modern Mountain Getaway where we used Evolve Stone around the foundation. So this stuff is uh, something you can shoot on with a nail gun. Yep. Intriguing. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, get started. Perfect. A few things about this Evolve Stone is that we're using a Class B fire rated version of their stone because it's around a fireplace. And secondly, it's super lightweight, like around two pounds per square foot, which is like really lightweight. Usually stone on a fireplace can tend to need reinforcing in your framing because the stone is so heavy. So it's also great in that way. Hey, didn't we float your stone on the last video? Yeah. It actually floats, right? Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure that wasn't made up. Nope. Quick disclaimer here, if you're thinking about doing this with Evolve Stone on your own fireplace, check your local building codes, check all of the paperwork with your fireplace, and check with your inspector to make sure it's gonna work on yours. It may not, even though it's gonna work on ours. Here's our firebox, and this is gonna get totally closed in today, so the first thing we need to do is clean out anything that's in here. This was a sad moment when I realized we had a hot sauce down, but uh, we're gonna vacuum and just get everything out of here so that it's clean in there. What's this pocket for? Is that like a walkie-talkie? That was a cell phone from 19, oh, oh, 1990 so something, you know? That's why this thing was on sale. <laughs> While we're waiting for Jamie to show up with our OSB that's going to go on this, we're going to go ahead and do a layout stick. And basically what we're going to do is lay some of these pieces of stone on the floor, sandwich them between two boards so that we can get an average of what the actual width of the stone is and make a layout stick so that we figure out we don't want to end up with a sliver at the top or bottom that's what we're trying to avoid here here's the layout stick in action you can see that going from the top that was a layout mark boom boom that would be the bottom of a full row you got to remember we've got you know a good three quarters of flooring here um, we're using an engineered floor so it may only be five eighths so using the layout stick we're able to figure out <laughs> we're gonna have a, a tiny sliver somewhere or we're gonna have to do a piece of trim around the top or something but at least we know now so we can figure it out beforehand I've got some beautiful scale drawings here. We're either gonna do this, where we do a piece of trim over top, uh, up top, so that you don't see this teeny row, and we can actually shoot that right through because you can shoot nails through this. Or second, we might use this, um, this ledge stone, which is about two inches, which is about the right size, and put it up top so that we have nearly a full row at the bottom. That's what that would look like. Uh, actually, we should check from the bottom of this down to the top of the stove and see what we come out with there. Make sure it's not a goofy sliver, too. Well, I think that looks good. Oh, yeah. Check that out. So, oh! <laughs> it is dead on. Perfect. A full right there. So, uh, I think that's going to be what we do because that, that makes this work out just right. Jamie's finally here because he's been at home welding some. Well, actually. Ray's been welding that one, I assume. Yeah, no, Ray's my first good, time. That's a good job, bro. It's well, not bad you know, at all. It, it really is his first time, but I want Ray to learn how to weld. So every time we got something like this, I'm gonna let Ray do it. Yep. So what you got here is, these are the floating mantle brackets. They will get attached while well, we got junk in the way. To the side of a stud, we're gonna put a bunch of screws and actually use some glue 
like construction adhesive okay. behind it to make sure it's really on there. Okay. We'll just screw it on there and then stone around it. Yep, and then the mantle will get a hole drilled in it and it'll just slide on later. That's it. Okay. Yep. Don't want to forget that. Yeah, I'll just give it a little bump there. Come on there. Whoa. Put a screw in it. Our next step of the process is to nail half inch OSB on the rest of the chase and we'll be using a new tool. This, we finally went cordless, finally. It's about time. I know, it is about time. So we got this from Northern Tool. Thank you to Northern Tool and Equipment. And if you didn't know, Northern Tool has just about everything you would need to build an entire house, including scaffolding, generators, compressors, cordless nail guns, and hand tools. I will link in the description to this guy right here if you're interested in checking it out. This is how we're doing things today. Got some plywood. Can't strap it. Screw it, you know? Desperate carpenters do desperate things. I'll probably get pulled over when they look at this and see I don't have straps. I was really getting tired of Eric stealing my square. So, I, well, <laughs> it happens a lot. So my wife printed off some lettering for me and I decided to engrave it into my square. You're not gonna be washing that off and telling me that it's yours, <laughs> That's okay? That's engraved, like in it? It's in there, buddy. What like, would you use? A little pen engraver. It's oh. like a little tattoo machine for metal. You got too much time on your hands, bub. I know. <laughs> Looks like he's getting the better of you. Oh, I like what it is. Oh, you faked yeah. me out. <laughs> right about the house. <laughs> so get these averaged out right there. That looks good. Somebody get a hand on that one. You got her? I got her, sort of. Okay. Wow. We got a few rows going here. We're actually using preformed outside corners, which Looks nice. Oh, it makes and it so easy. And it's so much faster than mitering each of them like so we did these up here. What we're doing here is just marking the pieces that we need to cut, and then they're just cutting them with a regular saw because it's just a resin composite. You can cut through it. Razor cut guy. Hey, cut guy. And the cut that. Guy. Yep. Big, and then uh, we're nailing them on here. So we're, we're cruising. This is about, I don't know, 15 minutes worth. So it's gonna be an early day. Like to learn from our mistakes but what we did at first was started tight to the ceiling with this uh this road that sticks out then we just started shoving our rows tight to that well come to find out our ceiling row was not dead nuts straight so we had to kind of pry all these down a little bit reshoot them and then now we're drawing a line across from corner piece to corner piece each time to make sure it's actually straight yeah you're drawing with a black magic marker on a black wall can you see that <laughs> I can somehow. I don't know how. Perfect. I can. I think it's the just sheet is different. Yeah. Dust on your camera. Here. <laughs> Seriously. There you go. It's a little better. <laughs> All right. I mean, I'm just gonna try this one out here. Yeah, 
shaking his brain. Man, that it's is all right. perfectly good. You know, I don't know why this one looks so much better than the other one. You know what? But um, Somebody must have wasted their time to measure this one really good because it's behind the mantle. I mean, you know. And the guy yeah. that did that one didn't even measure. He just you guessed just, in five you just, seconds. You just take a few marks and you get it perfect. <laughs> time of about two and a half hours to do the whole thing. Stick. <laughs> Done. Unfortunately, right now we have to like cover it up immediately because they're gonna spray texture on the ceiling in the morning and we do not want the uh, ceiling texture all over the stone. So it's gotta disappear right now. So we're gonna do that. Absolutely. So we had a little time using our uh, Milwaukee cordless framing nailer. I actually did a review on the DeWalt cordless framing nailer, which at the time was the only one I had used. It belongs to Johnny Brook, who is a friend of ours who's also a YouTuber. So how did we like this one? Um, I really liked it, actually. Uh, the things that I liked about it were that it's a more immediate fire. Uh, it doesn't have to spin up as long as the DeWalt does. And it seemed to have a faster bump trigger mode. Um, also, it never jammed, which we did have some jamming issues on the DeWalt framing nailer. Uh, I think it is a little heavier, just if you're wondering. also has the toolless depth adjustment. And um, so overall, I was really happy with it. I think it's going to change our lives, Ray. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> we need to get one that just... <laughs> for the matter. We just need one that just nails for us. That's Jason. Yeah. Give this to Jason. Okay. Done. Well, it's been another great day up here on the mountain. We got the fireplace stone today. Yeah. I can't say stone, can I? Cut. We got the stonework on the fireplace today, and it looks great, and it only took us one day. It's very hassle-free, so that is awesome. And we are gonna go to the house. Appreciate it, Dom. Yeah, thanks for coming out, and we'll see you again soon. And thanks for building with us today. We'll see you next time. Hey, we gotta make sure this mantle doesn't weigh more than 170 pounds. I think that's the limit. You're being awful generous there at 170. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was headed home. are so cool and they're everywhere around here. There's another one somewhere. Oh, there he is. Thanks for watching Elk with us today.